Welcome back to the Tiberium Hanger. This is Mike, and I'm coming at you with the weekly news and review for February 13th, 2022. 2022, we've got, of course, some Transformers news. Not so much in the Masterpiece Department, and not a whole lot for Legends, but a lot of mainline stuff going on, and a lot of oddball stuff for Transformers. Star Wars Black Series, we've got quite a few reveals. A little bit with, with the Vintage Collection, but... This is a mixed bag. Star Wars is a mixed bag. I'm trying to stay excited about it, but I think they're personally asking me to quit. This looks great, though. We got news on Mattel trying to shut down some Jurassic Park channels. But hey, four months later, we finally get pictures of the next wave of Origins. I guess it's going to keep going. Hyatt Toys is getting into the 112th or 6-inch range with Rambo. With G.I. Joe, I don't know what's going on with G.I. Joe. More Robocop, more things going on with them. And they make exquisite 3.75 inch figures. See how this plays out. And another Voltron by 3-0? Awesome. We're going to talk about this. Coming up. Starting out with some good stuff from my friends at Show Z here. We do have this Zeta Toys, the ZEOA Dark Side Superatron. And it is the set of six. It's a gift set of six figures to make a giant Spiritron. Looks amazing. Looks great. I'm happy with it. It is Masterpiece scale. And it is 450 bucks. KFC Toys is on sale for their Octoclones, this reflector, which to me is great. It's a great set. It's one I actually have displayed right now, even though I actually have the fans toys in the box. And it's $143.99 down from $160. Another Zeta offering on sale for $139.99, so $140 for the VO2, the Flash Blitzwing, so the one that confused me thinking it should have been Starscream. And we have Bingo Toys, BT-01, Silencer, Shockwave, and it's a second batch, so they got a batch, they were out of stock, now they're back in stock, $145. Looks pretty solid. And again, this is 12 inches tall, made of plastic and diecast parts so before we get into the little bit of stuff that would almost classify as masterpiece transformers news i do want to talk about this with three zero and they had a presentation in wonder one hobby it's really cool the product lines they're putting out here we're going to talk about them real quick so they've got ultraman and they've got this three zeros fig zero one sixth ultraman suit and so those are pretty big so when I'm looking at that, and I'm saying one-sixth, it's about the size of this Voltron. And so it also has a Robo Duo Voltron from the popular 80s U.S. anime series. Voltron, Defender of the Universe, plus the Robo Duo Tekamon. And this is 3 Zeros redesign inspired from the classic Japanese anime from the 70s. So this is really some cool stuff that's coming out. Out of all this, I know there's a lot of Ultraman lovers out there. But for me, this Voltron looks great. And I'm still super duper excited about the the Blitzway 5 Pro Studio one that's coming out. That thing is going to be shipping pretty soon, and I'm excited about that one. And then 3.0 comes out with this, so really interesting. I wonder if they're the same size, same scale. Is this one bigger or smaller or shorter, and what's the differences? This one doesn't transform, obviously, so they could actually make it even better if they wanted to. Sadly, no price, no release, and no exact measurements, so we can measure this thing up but it looks amazing it looks awesome so does the blitzway so the, i think the blitzway might still beat it but if this is cheaper if this is 200 and the blitzway 700 there might be a market for it and this really doesn't classify as masterpiece either but it's sort of big the da91 super heavy equipment pod gantry diaclone reboot and it looks pretty cool so it kind of turns from this gantry into a pod of things and it's interesting we've seen this before the new information on this is that it's 189.99 and the release date is going to be in july so there's also this takara diaclone tactical mover tread versa versalter is that a versalter so this thing's going to be 10 inches tall it's going to change convert transform into this pod thing that's going on so it's really kind of cool. This is more or less us getting Diaclone, the origins of Transformers, in a way, 
we're getting Diaclone in Masterpiece scale, or at least that's the way I look at it. I might be wrong in that, but here it is with kind of a transforming flying pod thing. So we've seen some of this before, but updated pics, updated information, pretty cool. So we got more pictures, in-hand pictures, of the Yolo Park Plamo model kit, and this is 12 inches tall, 30 centimeters roughly translates over into 12 inches, so 30 divided by 2.54. And it looks really good. It looks really great. And I got to thinking about, like, what's the point of this? It doesn't transform, but it's super highly articulated, and you got to put it together yourself, I believe. And so with all of this, I get to thinking that the 12-inch really works out pretty well for anyone with a masterpiece display that wants to incorporate these designs and doesn't really want to go with the transforming one. And it's a lower price point, well, uh, lower price point than their big one. So I, I kind of wondered too with Yolo Park with the big 20 inch thing they had going on that where is that going to go? So making these, I think more people will buy it because A price point, B will fit in their collection and uh, but, but then again, I don't know how many people would want to put it together, but still looks pretty awesome. Looks pretty cool. Moving forward on, on another Prime project. So 3 Zeros also come out with their deluxe version of the last night off this Prime. Now this is... It's quite obvious they were going to make it, and this, I personally think this is the least represented Optimus Prime that's out there because it was probably not the greatest movie around, but it wasn't supported very well as a movie. Now, people still like the design, still like to collect this, and of course they're going to make it. This is 11.2 inches tall, it has 72 points of articulation, released sometime this year, <laughs> we don't know, hopefully, but... It's officially licensed and it's a pretty big and we know that 30 does great work so you want to add this to your collection again still 11.2 inches fits just right on your existing masterpiece shelf tis the season four another studio release moon studio with the ms06 cool peak it's a g1 season and this looks really nice i have to say i'm highly impressed with every single figure Moon Studio has put out for this Raiden, and yes, I canceled my orders, sadly, and I pre-ordered them at the lower 105 price, sadly, but these look great. Uh, I think I look forward to watching some reviews on this and seeing this and kind of watching it from the sidelines, even though I'm a little bit jealous because this looks great. All these figures look amazing, and the people out there taking the pictures just make this look awesome. So anyhow, this set looks awesome, and and it's so much cheaper than what the car is doing, but see, I care about the bot modes and combined modes, and I think this wins in both departments. So, Kotopakia is making statues of a representation of Optimus Prime into sort of an anime girl. An anime girl statue of Optimus Prime and an anime statue girl of Megatron. Strange, but not that strange, I guess. And if you're in on this, well, it's it's pretty interesting. So you can kind of see Optimus Prime, the color scheme, and then how it converts into a girl wearing a Matrix necklace and uh, goggles on the head and all this kind of stuff. So really strange and interesting and cool at the same time. So this is kind of an art style and a translation style in a statue form. Here's 3D uh, actual prototype of it, and it's kind of cool. It's got the little um, a suitcase that looks like a truck, Optimus Prime, and you've got wheels on the lower feet there to kind of represent Optimus Prime. So a lot of interesting touches to translate this over. So there it is, and it's pretty cool. I don't think there's actually a prototype just yet of the Megatron version, but there is of the Optimus Prime version. If you like that, then you're going to love this. The... Windblade model kit is coming in stock at Show Z. If you're interested, you can get it. Uh, she is highly posable, so you can pose her however you'd like, or you can pose her like this. So she's coming in stock. If you like the Kotobukiya statues, you're going to like this. So we've got some pictures of Iron Factory, the IFEX 52T Twin Edge Blade. Nora Mine, Nora Moon, Tuski. Anyway, this is interesting because it, it, they kind of have that samurai look to it, and they've done quite a few of these, and I'm going to do quite a few more. 
and they're very, very popular. They sell out pretty quick, so it does transform into this, and there it is with the alt mode. Looks pretty good. This is the color prototype, so still not much more information about price availability and all that kind of stuff, but I'm sure it's going to be similar to what Iron Factory's done in the past, price in the past, and coming up pretty soon. Uh, there is a lot on Iron Factory's plate right now, and this is only one of many of these Samurai figures. Not much news on Legends, and I did get the McFans Toys Perceptor. I opened the box, and I was shocked about something about that, so I'm going to make that review pretty soon. But looking at these, this is another picture of somebody else doing all of these modern combiners side by side. And Magic Square on the left, Zeta in the middle, and on the right, we have New Age. So these look amazing. Just every one of them looks amazing. I don't think you can go wrong with either of the Devastators that are out there. You can't go wrong with all of them. They all look amazing. Just awesome. Just expensive. So Josiah Toys has... A, a figure of a cassette that transforms into a hound and it looks pretty good for a cassette turning into a hound. But it doesn't just turn from a cassette into a robot, it also turns into a little mini jeep. It also has an accessory, it has all this that's worked into it, engineered into it. Pretty cool, pretty interesting. If you are a fan of G1 cassettes like I am, I just, it's an addiction. And I might have to pick up on some of this in the future. So there's a lot of mainline news today to talk about. A lot of stuff happened this past week. But I was at what's called a dirt cheap. Which it's kind of a last end, last resort retail shop that takes all of the stuff from the Targets and the Walmarts. And, and pretty much everywhere that dumps their stuff. And this popped up. It's a Galvatron. And I almost bought it because I was like, oh, cool, because what the retail price is, it's 30, 40, 50, sometimes 90% off of the retail price at the dirt cheap. But this wasn't Galvatron. If you look really close, it is a Cyberverse Shockwave that was repackaged in there. And yeah, you know, there's some level of scum to repackage a, a, a garbage figure and return it, but it ends up at places like this. If you ever wondered what happens to those, they end up at these closeout last in retails. And yeah, th this was actually a really good repackage of a Shockwave, but it sucks for all collectors. So there's a lot of mainline news out there, but I found this chart that sort of aligns with some of the stories that are getting told here. So I'm going to go over this chart real quick of what's coming up for this next year, I guess. So Wave 1, of course, is a Skywarp. And these are the legend size retail figures for 10 bucks. Skywarp, Hot Rod, and Iguanas. And then Wave 2 would be Shockwave G1 version of Shockwave. And then a G2 Megatron. And then Octopus Prime, I guess, carried over. And then Iguanas carried over. And then Wave 3, Soundwave carried over. And Energon Monster and Skullgrin. Now, moving down to Deluxe, we see Wave 1 would be a Skids, a Drag Strip, a, a Prime RC, and Kickback. All this aligns with all of these lists that I've been seeing. Wave 2 would be a knockout that actually transforms not just the red version. And then an Alita 1, which I think is going to be an all-new Alita 1. Interested in seeing that. Tarantulas, which is which is a remake. We all believe it's just a remake of other figure. It's a Wild Rider in there. And then Wave 3, Deluxe Wave 3. I'm excited for a point blank. I'll probably get a few of those because that figure has seen no attention in the main line. And then, I, what is that one? A crank case, something? I, I, I cannot read that one. And the inner jaw monster, and then dead end. Then moving over to Voyager Wave 1, a repackage of Blaster, a bulkhead prime. So I don't know if that's going to be the uh, the one that looks more G1-esque. I think that is the one that looks more G1-esque. And then a sound wave from the prime, a hijacks, and then... Wave 3 would be Armada Starscream and Beast Wars Inferno. And I, I'm not a huge Beast Wars fan. Inferno is in my probably my top 10 list of Beast Wars characters I'd want. So I'm definitely in on him. So getting down to Wave 4, we've got Breakdown for this Combiner. And then we get into Leaders. So with Leaders, there is the Laser Optimus Prime. There is the Galvatron, which... 
hopefully if you get repackages of Galvatron in the new packaging, you won't know you have a, a, a Shockwave in there. Just heads up. Blitzway, Blitzwing, Blitzway, Blitzwing. Blitzwing for a leader class is going to be awesome. Just awesome. Right next to your leader class Astro Train, which they're all going to be a little bit too small for the $53 price point, the new $53 price point. And then Dragon version of Megatron. I haven't heard much about this at all, really. But I'm excited. Now, getting into Commander Class, Commander Class Motormaster, and then Titan Class Cybertron Metroplex, but we, we need a G1 Metroplex. So we've got a lot of stuff going on with this Jada Toys, which we have a Transforming Optimus Prime here, and it's one of many things in their new lineup for Transformers, but we've seen this before. This is nothing new. We had it, I don't know, was it about a decade ago where we had a Bubble Bee and... Uh, a couple of other transforming ones that use this similar remote. And I actually have several of them around here. I just got to dig them out, find them, and put new batteries in and stuff. But they it's extremely simplistic transformation. This is not RoboSid level. This is super, super simplistic with only like five parts moving or something. But it's still kind of cool. It's still kind of fun. And for the price point, they were like 25 bucks back then. So probably 35 bucks now. Hopefully not 50 Here's more stuff in their lineup. So you've got all of these figures and characters. Well, they're not really figures. They're just cars and trucks and they open doors or they, they don't. But still kind of cool. Jada, it's out there. It's it's doing some Transformer stuff. They also got this three pack of, I, I think they're kind of Hot Wheels size vehicles. So you've got a Jetfire, you've got a Hot Rod, and you've got a Side Swipe. So... Looks pretty good. And we've also got a slew of these minifigures that are coming out that they're making. So this stuff, this minifigure thing is kind of cool if you want to make your your Titan class or your, maybe you want to go to Unicron to make them look massive and put these next to it. There is a reason for this. This is very good in a way if you want to make that scale look right. That's what these are for. That's what you want to secure them for. But if you're not looking to do that, then you're probably not interested. So there's a list of stuff that's supposed to be coming out for the Rise of the Beast movie. Whether or not you're interested in that, that's beyond the point here. But some of the items that are going to be is a 2-in-1 mask for Bumblebee, Battle Changer Bumblebee, Battle Changer Mirage, Battle Charger Mirage, Battle Charger Rhinox, Beast Battle Master Cheetor, Beast Battle Master Crescent, Beast Battle Master Rhinox, Beast Mode Bumblebee Combiner, 2-pack RC, Combiner 2-pack Bumblebee, 2-pack uh, Optimus Primal, Scourge, and then a Weaponizer 2-pack. Now, this Weaponizer thing is going to be kind of interesting, but uh, Weaponizer Pack uh, RC, Optimus Primal, Optimus Primal, Wheeljack. So, not knowing exactly what all of this is, we're all guessing at this point. But then again, yesterday's rumors are today's truths, and most of them have come true. 49 cents. So we've got some of this Takara Premium Finish repaint. So it's the Takara Tomy Premium Finish line uh, for the Legacy and Kingdom and all that kind of stuff. They're putting out a slightly different, slightly repainted. So these aren't as different as they were like 10 years ago when they do different repaints. They're just slightly repainted. So really not that big of a deal. But this line, in my mind, gives you a chance to get a figure that sold out two or three years ago and now is selling for 100 bucks. And then you can get it back. Instead of paying 30 you pay 50 That's kind of how it works. But anyway, we're getting into this. There's a blaster. Here's the alt mode of blaster. So there is more detail and more paint to this. It is a premium finish. So you're going to get more paint, more line work, more line work that's been painted. Getting into, is this eject or rewind, one of them? So eject, yeah. And clear. I mean, I don't see much of a difference. But then again, you know, if you look at them side by side, I guess you'd see the difference. This is the Hot Rod. And this is the core class, but they call it KDEX. I don't know. They call it something different, but here we go with Optimus Prime, and this is the movie version, and the, I think this is straight out of the 2007. I might be wrong. I might be wrong. Anyway, Studio Series 05 Prime, and then we go to the alt mode, and there it is. So... 
I don't know what's repainted on this. I don't know because I don't really keep up with the movie stuff as well as I probably should. Here's a repaint on skids. I don't know. I think this this does look better than the other skids. All of this could be the photography, but I do think the premium finish looks really good on skids here. And then right there, there's the skids alt mode and all the stuff that clips on. So kind of, you know, the mainline stuff. Here we are with drag strip, premium finish, and I I don't know, is it the weapons that are painted better? Because I, I, he looks the same to me. And then the alt mode right here, looking all right, premium finish. The bulkhead right there, uh, looking like a G1S type of bulkhead. And there's the alt mode. So I don't know what the premium finish is on this either, but it does. these pictures look great. So there's an Amazon Japan listing for a Transformers Generations book of 2022 edition coming in June 1st, and it's going to cost approximately $28.65. The thing about this is that there's not really 100% uh, of understanding what's going to be in this, but it's it's going to be a lot of artwork and stuff like that, I believe. Maybe it's even going to talk about the toys, the cartoon and the toys, but it's one of those things that it's, it's going to come and go if you're into print media, which is kind of hard to get these days, and it's a dying media, then you might want to be in on it and just go to Amazon Japan to get it. But a lot of people missed out on this G.I. Joe Kickstarter for, and it talks, showed a lot of stuff about G.I. Joe, and people are kind of upset that they missed the two-week Kickstarter on that, so don't miss out on this if you're in on the Headmasters, the Japanese Headmasters, and it's on Amazon Japan, this book, be pretty interesting. So the last bit of Transformers news is a transforming Lego Optimus Prime and it looks like it's got the in my in my opinion it's looking kind of like the jetpack that you got with the Jetfire but anyway it's based off of one of the movies it's gonna be almost $200 1,508 pieces released in May and Something about the appearance of the upcoming Rise of the Beast film. And so with all of that, pretty interesting. And if you're in on it, you might want to check into it. But no concrete places to pre-order this just yet. But when they do pop up, Lego stuff sells fast. And I don't know a whole lot about Lego Transformers. I don't see much about Lego Transformers. Maybe this is a new era. All right, so in other news, there's a lot of other news to get to that's not Transformers news this week. But this week, Mattel went after Andy's Dinosaur Reviews and Collector Aspects. Several other YouTubers have made videos about it, and I don't really want to make an entire video talking about it, but I do want to put my two cents worth in. I could talk for 30 minutes, maybe even an hour straight, about all the problems surrounding what happened here, but Mattel went after them to get... Copyright strikes. One of the channels is allegedly getting taken down. One of the Instagrams is allegedly, allegedly getting taken down. As I checked yesterday on Friday, and I'm making this on Saturday, they were everything was still up, 100% still up. And I actually got information, most of my information from Twitter, which I hate Twitter. I hate going on Twitter, and I hate, I just hate Twitter. Uh, I got to make a video about that. The thing is that most people, most viewers, are going to go, well, it doesn't affect me. I mean, this is content creators getting taken down won't affect me well they stop making content or they go somewhere else you can't find them so there are issues with this but the biggest problem is mattel will go four months radio silent on their biggest property well it's probably not their biggest but one of their biggest properties with masters of the universe and then yeah maybe we'll get some sort of information pictures reveals release dates or something eh, maybe not they don't really care but the people doing their job for them in the marketing department, let's go ahead and shut their channels down. I don't like that. A lot of people didn't care about the whole COPA thing. Now, what do we have? Hundreds of toy channels that are converted to kid only, and you don't see any of their content because it doesn't get recommended. Well, anyway, somebody at Mattel decided to actually show up to work today or one day this week, and we actually got pictures of Origins. So let's hope it <laughs> continues past 2022. Because we finally got pictures of stuff I pre-ordered three months ago. Yes, I pre-ordered it. I pre-ordered it three months ago. I was going to go to BBTS and get that whole picture of no picture. Like, it's a picture, but no picture. And I was going to say, hey, this is what Mattel's been working on. But 
I guess the same week they shut down channels, <laughs> the same week they decided to actually do their job for a change. Yeah. Strike me down, Mattel, and I will return more powerful than you could possibly imagine. So Haya Toys, who's known for making 3.75 inch Robocops and a, a few other things that are going on these days, but they're getting into the 1 12th scale or 6 inch figure range and they're making 1 12th scale Rambo, 1 12th scale, 1 12th scale Robocop, I believe, I believe. So there's a lot of stuff going on here, a little bit confusing with what's going on, but it's exciting that they're putting all these things out. Now I, I'm wondering if the Robocop's going to stay 3.75 because NECA's got the 112 scale uh, Robocop, but we're definitely going to get some Rambo in here. But NECA doesn't have the Rambo, and NECA Rambo's expensive. There's a lot of stuff going on. Let's show some pictures. So this is the work that Haya Toys did on their Robocop for 3.75, and probably not the greatest picture out there of it, but I have one in hand. It is amazing. This is a very good figure for 3.75. So my mind is going to be blown when I see what they do with the one 12 scale or six inch hopefully i'm not let down but they do a great job that small i imagine if they can do it that well at 3.75 at the six inch scale it's going to be amazing this is what their one 12 scale six inch judge dread looks like so i just think they're going to do a, a great job uh, i don't know about quality at the scale of one six and i haven't opened my robocop i just think the artwork and the everything looks great i just don't want to open it 20 dollar 3.75 inch figures in my opinion, don't need to be opened. But this dude is six inch and looks great. All right, time to give in to your anger and talk about Star Wars. So there's a lot of stuff going on this week. And before I get into the reveals, I want to say what's showing up right now. And we're seeing this wave here, which is the wave after the Bib Fortuna wave, if I'm correct on all this. But I have not seen the Bib Fortuna wave, any remnants of it anywhere around here. And I just did a road trip. And looking also that I will probably not see this. Hopefully June and July are good for me. So they had a live stream, a fan first, whatever live stream this week. And I was watching it and I was thinking, you know what? This is pretty awesome. We've got this playset, this Jabba Palace Diorama 2.0. The first one's 50 bucks at Walmart, came with two figures and you know, three large pieces of plastic and a couple of other things but this thing here is three large pieces of plastic maybe four and one figure so okay one less figure more scenery 50 bucks would be great so i'm watching this live stream and i'm thinking about it and then another video pops up i i click over to watch it mega j retro and holy crud 229 239 dollars for this thing $239 for this. And I'm sitting here the whole time during the live stream thinking 50 And $239. And I believe it's a Pulse exclusive, which I hate Pulse. Pulse has made me hate it lately. I don't know. This is actually a formal written letter from Hasbro requesting that I stop collecting Star Wars. That's what this is. It looks amazing. There is no chance in this world I would spend $229 on this. There's not a chance at all. I could sell one of my Razor Crests that just came in. I am not buying this thing for $229. I was thinking $50. Maybe $70. No way! $229. Looks amazing though. And it comes with a bit Fortuna. Hey, he's almost big enough to be a Black Series figure. <laughs> okay, so the Archive Wave announcements were no surprise to anybody. But, in a way. We kind of already got hints and rumors and leaks and all that over the past four or five six months but i want to say that i have a lot of negative stuff to say about star wars and this is really a good archive wave the archive wave that's hanging right now that wave was a terrible selection of figures you're gonna see obi-wans and leia's hanging on pegs everywhere because the only two good figures get sold. And I don't even... I know one's a Revan. I don't even know what the other one is. I'll never see it. But while we're looking at this picture... This $26 thing here is pretty cool. Uh, except for... Ray says the whole thing's garbage. But the Baby Yoda and the Mandalorian look okay. So back to this Archive Wave thing. So... The Lando, yes, you can still get it on Amazon for like 17 bucks. Lando is like the cheapest figure. Uh, he's 
Constable Zumio. <laughs> I don't know. They made so many Landos. I don't know. It's like the most produced figure out there. Like, you could have an army of Landos. It's cheaper to get an army of Landos than a cheaper to get uh, Stormtroopers. But still, it's a great figure. An excellent figure. It's awesome. Dengar. Dengar is great choice. Climbing in price. Hard to find. He was hard to find. I had to order him off eBay. I never found him in store, online, anywhere, except eBay. I found him on eBay. So then I got my Dengar and my Lando at the same time on eBay because none of them showed up in the store. And then C-3PO. Now this is one that's got articulation. You don't have to have a stupid red arm on him. And he has his silver leg piece from the New Hope and all that, if I got all that right. And then the infamous $300 Emperor without a throne, though. So it's, I think it's the same Emperor that was in the $300 one. Uh, it was 30 bucks at Amazon. Then it sold out, went to 300 and then people said, we're not going to pay that anymore. So he was like 100 But now if you could catch him, <laughs> he'll be 20 bucks, 25 bucks, 23 bucks. My favorite thing from the live stream is this Dark Trooper. Now I've got a bit of an association with this Dark Trooper. Now I think it was, well... I think. I know it was silver when I bought them in 3.75. I probably have 11 of those Dark Troopers. I've got a little bit of army going, some package, some not. They're spread out all over, but uh, I really think that black is a better color for Dark Trooper than the stupid silver one they had before, but it was still awesome when it was silver. But I think this is a great figure, a great looking figure, and it deserves a $30 price point if it's bigger. If I pull this thing out, it's the same size as Luke Skywalker, I'm going to be really mad. But I kind of hope he's a little bit bigger, and if he's a little bit bigger, and everything is all new on it, it's worth the deluxe price point. I pre-ordered two. So we got the Gamers Great Exclusive GameStop Knight Brother Archer, which is kind of cool. It's it's like the, the Darth Maul brother, in my mind, that's what I think of when I see this. And he's got a bow and a lightsaber and all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of cool. Uh, I don't know if it's worth the extra price tag, which I don't know. If things are 23 to 25 bucks, what, what's this going to show up at? Hopefully only 25 at GameStop. 27, who knows? 26.99. But still, kind of cool, kind of different. But I'm curious how many people are going to go after this. They also showed some pipeline reveals for Ayla Secura, which doesn't. That makes sense. I mean, that's no surprise at all. They're going to make that figure. And Darth Maul with the the Season 7 version of Darth Maul. And then Saw Gerrera. All that makes sense. I, I'm okay with all that. No problem there. Then we got Pipeline Reveals of Archive. And again, I'm scratching my head. It's good and bad at the same time. So Han Solo Force Awakens literally plagued every store in retail for about five months at five dollars I probably have like six of this guy because I was thinking about using him for custom fodder and I mean Harrison Ford awesome even even older Harrison Ford maybe make an Indiana Jones out of him or something but why do we need it again like you can still get to, what you can get it for like shipping free pay shipping off eBay right now then Chewbacca New Hope I mean Chewbacca yeah he comes and goes and sometimes He's a little hard to get. Sometimes you have to pay $26 to get him on eBay, but I don't, I don't really see why we need another Chewbacca. Grand Moff Tarkin, on the other hand, awesome character, awesome figure. And then Leia Boosh, that is a good reissue because she is kind of hard to get. And Vintage Collection reveal of this Din Djarin or the Mandalorian when he was in the heavy armor, Stormtrooper stuff, Morok. Anyway, I guess that's kind of cool. I guess they can get reuse and use a couple different heads on that for the vintage collection. But I still don't think it's really all that exciting. So let me know what you think about this week's weekly news and review. What else is going on out there that I miss? I like to know. I like to stay in the know. Keep up with the cool stuff. Like and subscribe. Comment below. But Hanger out.